and welcome to my presentation on cloud desktop screencasting. I'm going to show you how to broadcast your remote desktop screen completely unattended. This is brought to you by awarenessforx.com. For this tutorial we will be using the livestream.com's Procaster as well as uh, my own copy of Windows Server 2008 uh, R2 64-bit server. What are some of the reasons why we would want to stream a remote desktop? Well, the reasons are not much different than the reason why you would want to record uh, something in real life. If you want to record like a football game or a news event or anything like that, it's so that you can visually keep track of whatever's going on. Anything graphical on your desktop that you would want to review back later, you could record. For those of us who trade financial markets like stocks, forex, or commodities, we want to be able to track visually what's going on on a chart when we're unable to be there on the screen. Or maybe we just want to play it back later so that we can see how our strategies performed and we can make adjustments. Uh, now another reason is that uh, sometimes a broker's platform might freeze up or you may want to compare two or more broker data feeds you want to be able to compare and see uh, what the difference between the spread are for different brokers more importantly you can monitor the performance of your trading strategies for later review offline this is particularly important for those of us who use automated strategies so you can monitor chart performance broker price feed the platform stability and also other things going on on your computer or server all at the same time if you try to use a home computer you don't know when the power might cut off or when the internet connection might be shaky a residential internet connection is not guaranteed whereas a VPS or dedicated server they have nearly a hundred percent uptime Remote desktops don't typically have a monitor connected to them. So when you connect using remote desktop connection, you have to always leave that connection on in order to paint the desktop screen. Once you disconnect from the remote server, your screen will stop working. You create the virtual desktop when you connect to the server. So when you disconnect from the server, the desktop disappears. So any type of uh, program that requires a screen in order to operate like a screen recording program would obviously fail as soon as we disconnect from the remote desktop. Making sure you have the necessary resources like RAM. Screen recording software is very RAM hungry so you should have at least 512 megs of free RAM. The solution is to take two RDC connections and link them together. You do this by creating two desktops. You can either create two usernames on the same server or take two different servers and link them together that way. Desktop 1 or VM1, Virtual Machine 1, will be the desktop screen we want to stream. Virtual machine number two or VM2 or desktop two will be the desktop that we will use to connect to VM number one or desktop one. This is usually our laptop or desktop at home or at work. For this tutorial example we will be creating a separate user on the same server and that will be VM2 or desktop number two. You open up remote desktop connection RDC and enter in your server details and connect to your remote desktop number two. Now I already have desktop number two pre-configured so we'll go ahead and launch that uh, remote connection. It's loading here now and here we are desktop number two. I just want to show you it looks exactly like any other desktop at Windows. This is Windows Server 2008. Now that we got desktop number two going, we're going to take VM2 and then connect to VM1 within VM2. The goal is to stream desktop number one, and we're going to use desktop number two to help us do that. You'll see how it all works out when I'm finished.
Now that desktop number one has finished loading, we're going to go ahead and launch Procaster so that we can begin streaming our desktop so other people can see it over the internet. Okay, now we are ready to stream the portion of the desktop that we would like to broadcast. We click on the Go Live button and just wait a few seconds. Let me bring out the web browser window that shows the Procaster channel. So you can see that it's offline, but it's waiting to come online now. It takes about 10 to 15 seconds for it to sync up. And here we are. We are live now over the internet. You can see that the desktop is now streaming. It looks identical. Now, the only thing that we have to do now is close out VM2 because we're still connected from our home computer so we have to verify that it can actually stream unattended in the cloud and we have disconnected now from VM2 and we can see that VM1 is still streaming in the cloud so uh, leave it up here for a couple more seconds so that you can see the live stream now let's maximize the broadcast so that we can take a closer look you can see that we are successfully streaming live and the time just keeps going up and up and up. Now as long as you have no problems with your server and as long as the remote desktop connection for VM1 stays open, there should be no problems with the stream. I've had it streaming for several hours and even days without any disconnection issues. I have a couple minutes left over here so I want to go ahead and show you some of the tricks I picked up while I was learning how to do all this. Now if you notice my remote desktop here is very very large and the reason why I made it so big was because you can see that I have several open windows and I wanted to be able to possibly do multiple streams at the same time. I want to be able to broadcast one window using one channel and then broadcast another window with another channel. When you do it this way you have plenty of screen real estate to work with. Now we'll show you how to edit the remote desktop connection. You right click on the saved RDP file and select open with and you use notepad to open up the file. Then you're going to look for the desktop width and desktop height inputs. Make sure you change them to 4096 and 2048 or whatever you want. I recommend these values so that you can get an idea of the maximum amount of desktop space you can work with. Anyway, now let's save the file, exit out, and then relaunch the remote desktop connection for VM number two. Okay, now we're going to edit the remote desktop file for VM one. We'll just use the same steps that we did when we edited the file for VM two. For VM one, I recommend a width of 3072, just simply because it's easier to work with rather than maxing it out at 4096 but it's up to you what you want to do. Now save the file and go ahead and launch VM1 from within VM2. We are now logged back into VM1 from VM2 and one of the ways you can tell that you successfully increased the desktop real estate is if you see the scrolling bars VM2 should have the horizontal and vertical scrolling bar so that you can move around the entire desktop. VM1 will show full screen within VM2. Okay, I'm running out of time here, so what I want to do is go ahead and just cover a couple of limitations that I ran into while I was setting up this whole uh, cloud desktop streaming. You're only allowed to use two RDC connections at once. VM1 is always active. VM2 will only be active as needed. Another tool is called Process Explorer by sysinternals.com. I have it sorted by RAM so that you can see which processes take up the most amount of memory. Well, it looks like I'm out of time, so we'll have to discuss more tips and tricks on my website discussion. Awarenessforex.com forward slash stream rdc dot html. And this concludes the tutorial. I hope you found the information useful in helping you set up remote video live streaming in the cloud. I sincerely appreciate your feedback. Please visit awarenessforex.com and drop me a note. Thanks for watching.